Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim Walhamdulillahi Rabbil Alamin Wa salatu wa salam ala Rasulillahi wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in wa ba'd So inshallah today we'll continue on to the next part of the introduction Because like I mentioned with this book there's three There's three parts, there's three introductory parts And then we'll actually start the actual book So we haven't actually gone into the asl al-awwal Because the asl, the asul al-thalatha Is a ma'rifat al-rabb Wa ma'rifat al-deen al-islam bil adilla And ma'rifat al-nabi so these three things, to know, to know your Lord, to know the religion of Islam with evidence, and to know the, the messenger, the final messenger, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So these are the three, the three principles. Now we haven't started on that part, so we have the first introduction, then we have the second introduction, then we have the third introduction. So right now we're on the second introduction, which you said page three. In the, in the, page three. In the, in the copy, yeah. So this part is said, Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. اعلم رحمك الله أنه يجب على كل مسلم ومسلمة تعلم هذه ثلاثي ثلاثي مسائل والعمل بهن. So he said, اعلم again to know. And we talked about knowledge the last class, and we said the knowledge it means what? إدراك الشيء على ما هو عليه إدراك جازما to know something in its reality to actually know something in its complete reality إدراك جازما إدراك جازما it means comprehension that has no doubts. You have no doubt in your understanding of that. That is knowledge. If you have doubt, then you don't have knowledge. Alam rahimukullah. And of course, here is it. I didn't mention this the first time, but uh, where he said rahimukullah, this is just a custom of the teacher to the students to make du'a for the students, to make du'a for the students. So alam. Here he says to know, and then he said rahimukullah, and then he makes du'a for the person who's studying this book. May Allah have mercy on you. And of course, we commonly say that Rahimukullah for a dead person, like Rahimahullah. But I mean, obviously, we're all in need of Rahmah, whether you're dead or you're alive. So this, uh, this dua for Rahmah is not specific only for dead people. So here he said, I'lam Rahimukullah, and who yajibu alayna. Yajib here it comes from the word wajaba, yajibu, wujuban, all right, which means to become is obligatory. So it's obligatory upon every Muslim and every Muslimah. All right, every Muslim and every Muslima ta'allum, to know, to learn. Hadihi thalatha al-masa'al, these three these three issues, okay? Masa'al, it comes from mas'ala, it comes from the word su'al. Sa'ala yas'alu, su'alan, and a mas'ala is something that you ask about, that you ask about. So any mas'ala is something that people are asking questions about, it becomes a mas'ala, an issue. All right, an issue that needs to be discussed or to be answered, like something that needs to be answered. Well, bihin. So he said that we need to know these three issues and we need to act upon them. All right. So there's three things. So the first one he said that ula, and Allah khalaqana wa razaqana wa lam yuturkana hamalan, bal arsala ilayna rasulan, faman ata'ahu dakhal al-jannah, wa man asahu dakhal al-nar. So he said the first issue is that Allah subhanahu wa taala He's created us. All right. And all of these things that he mentioned here are from the rububiyah because as we talked about before. The rububiyah, we need to know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through his rububiyah to understand that he's the only one that has the right to be worshipped. That he's the only one that has the right to be worshipped. So, anna Allah khalaqana, he, he created us. Wa razaqana, and he provides for us. Wa lam yathrukana hamala. Wa lam yathrukana hamala. And he never, he has not left us with no guidance and no, 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 uh, no, uh, how can I say this? No prohibitions and no uh, obligations. You know, because hamala, it means that you completely just leave the person. You leave them. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not leave us like that. And we can see this from, uh, you know, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you know, uh, He gave us uh, guidance through the Quran and the Sunnah, as prohibitions, and He gave us the obligations, the things that we have to do. So we have things, we have al-ma'roof. And, there, and we, understand, we have an understanding of the munkar. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not just leave us in this, this dunya to just act and figure things out on our own. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent down the Quran, sent down the final messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to give us this guidance in the sunnah. All right. So, and it goes back to like, uh, you know, the, the word muhmal, which uh, basically it means like you, uh, you just like, just leave it. Just like with no, you don't, you don't, you don't upkeep it. You don't do anything to like maintain it. You just leave it. And it goes back to a statement of a, a poem, which is la uh, al ajm which is the, the last line of the poem. Where he warned against being around the, the, the types of people that don't follow that type of guidance. 
where he said, قَالَ رَشِّحُوكَ لِأَمْرًا إِنْ فَطَنْتَ لَهُ He said that the people, because he's talking about a person who goes out and gets knowledge, and he becomes a better person. And now he's coming back to his people, because he went out and he had to seek knowledge, and now he's back with his people. Sound familiar? <laughs> Long time. Maybe that's why I have a, such a love for this poem. Now, Amit al-Ajim is from a Tugarai. Uh, so he wrote this poem like maybe 500, 600 years ago. So he said, He said, the people have chosen you for a big affair. And if you, if you can perceive it, if you can perceive what's going on. And then he said, He said, so, it means like, you know, take care of yourself and take, you know, take heed of yourself and pay attention to yourself. And The hamala like the people that you see out in the streets. They have no guidance. Nobody's there to tell them this is right, this is wrong. Nobody's there to give them any type of advice. This is like what you call the hamal. You know, the hamal, it actually means in the Arabic language, the livestock that are just left to herd. You know, they go out and they, they graze freely. Nobody's there to watch them. Nobody pays attention to them. Like the wild animals when they're grazing. Because there's no, there's no structure. There's nobody there to pay attention. So if something happens to them, nobody's going to be there to protect them. This is the hamal. So he said, "Farabat bi nafsika and taraat mal hamali." And to you know, to to you know, once you've gotten knowledge and you've gotten this type of, uh, you know, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala has blessed you. And once this knowledge has become, and it's not just for knowledge; it's like you become Muslim. As you become Muslim, you shouldn't you know go back and want to like be around the types of people that Allah saved you from, the type of person that you used to be. You go back to the people, and you give them advice. But you shouldn't be hanging around them and, uh, you know, enjoying their company. And this is, we're going to get to the last part, inshallah. Because Allah has given you the blessing of Islam. It's made you a better person. So you have to get away from that type of lifestyle and the people that live that lifestyle. And this is going to be the third part that we're going to go through, inshallah. It's going to become clear. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, يَحْسَبُ الْإِنسَانَ وَيُثْرَكَ السُّدَةِ And this is where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala here, He did not use the word, He used the word suda. يَحْسَبُ insan. So, yahsab al insan, do the people think that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sayyatrukum, what, suda, like, you know, la yu'mar wa la yunha, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to leave them on this earth where they're not, they're not in, you know, they're not given something that's an obligation and they're not given prohibitions that we just live by our desires, whatever. So, and this is what you see with a lot of the people that don't have religion. You know, they just go by whatever is in their desires. All right. So, Allah mustan. So, he said, after this, he said, he said, "Anna Allah khalaqana wa razaqana wa lam wa razaqana wa lam yuturakana hamalan." So hamalan it means just free, no no orders, no commands, no prohibitions. But arsala ilayna rasulan. But he said, "Bel." And "Bel" here is is used in the Arabic language to show that the opposite is true. That the people think that this is that Allah just left them. They said, "Bel." It's like kind of like with the old English, you know, in old English they used to say, "Nay." I don't think we have a word that we use nowadays, but if you go around and say, nay, it is not as you think it is, uh, people are going to laugh at you. But, you know, it has that type of meaning. But the opposite is true. He said, but uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent messengers. And these messengers, their duty was to teach you the guidance, to teach you the things that you need to know to live on this earth, to, to, to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the way that he's commanded you to worship him. That was their duty, and they fulfilled that duty. فَمَنْ أَطَاعَهُ دَخَلَ الْجَنَّةِ And whoever has obeyed that messenger that Allah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has sent and uh, in obedience to Allah because obedience to the messenger is obedience to Allah دَخَلَ الْجَنَّةِ وَمَنْ أَصَاهُ دَخَلَ النَّارِ And we know this also from a hadith of Abi Huraira رضي الله عنه He said كل, uh, Rasul صلى الله عليه وسلم قال He said كل, uh, كُلُّكُمْ يَدَخُلُوا جَنَّةَ إِلَّا مَنْ أَبَى He said all of you will enter into Jannah Illa man aba, except for the one who refuses. Now he's telling this to the Sahaba, right? And what do you think the Sahaba's response was? Who, who will refuse that? Yeah, and that's what they said. Well, man, ya ba ya Rasulullah, and who who's gonna refuse to go to Jannah? And then what did the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said? Who knows the hadith? Uh, the one disobedient. He said, man ata'ani, ya dakhul Jannah, right? Dakhul Jannah. Wa man asani. And he said, whoever disobeys me, then he's rejected, he's refused. He's refused to enter the, into Jannah. And that's what we see on the, on the hold, where the people, they come to the hold, the hold of the Messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, on the Day of Judgment. 
It's going to be like, uh, you know, where the river, it goes out into this big hole where the people drink from this hole. And after they drink from it, they, they'll never become thirsty ever, ever, ever again. For all of eternity, they'll never become thirsty again once they drink from this hole. And only the believers are going to drink from the hole. The Prophet Sallallahu is going to see people that look like us, that talk like us. But what happens is they're going to be turned away from the hole. And then, the, you know, the Prophet Sallallahu says, Ya Rabbi, I mean, you know, you know what, these, these are the believers, right? You know? And he said, And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells them, You don't know what they've done, how they changed your religion after you. Because they came in and they started like calling to things that weren't from the guidance from the Quran and the Sunnah. Things that weren't from the guidance of the, you see, what the, from the Sunnah of the Messenger. So they started taking their, their Imams as, as like the, as, you know, guidance. And obeying their imams and disobeying the Prophet وسلم, and going against the Sunnah. And he said, And what did the Prophet وسلم, say after he heard this? Now they're being turned away from the hole, and he sees them as believers. These are the Muslims. Why are they being turned away? And after Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said that, he says, Suhkan, suhkan liman ahdathu ba'di. Suhkan, it means bu'dan, uh, bu'dan. It means may they be very, very far away from me, the people that innovate after, my, after me. After my death. So this is the Prophet ﷺ. After he knows what they've done. And then what does he do? He makes dua against them. He says, Suhkan, Suhkan. Bu'dan, Bu'dan. May they be very far. May Allah make them very far. And he said it twice. Liman ahdatha ba'di. So this is very, very important. If you, the, the messenger was sent for that guidance, it's his obedience that is obligatory. It's not the obedience of any other person on the face of this earth. Nobody. Not Imam Ahmed. Not Imam Shafi'i. Not Imam Abi Hanifa, nobody. Nobody's uh, obedience is obligatory except for who? The Prophet ﷺ. And we only obey the ulama and we obey the imams and what they say that agrees with what? With the sunnah. If they say something that goes against the sunnah, well, we don't take their statements. We go back to the sunnah. We, we try to, and our guidance comes from the messenger. He's the only person whose obedience is absolutely is absolute. Khalas. You have to obey him. Everything else is, it follows the obedience of Allah and his messenger. Alright, so the same thing. We obey the leaders, the Muslim leaders. Alright, the Muslim leaders, because they're the only, like the Muslims have a walaya over us. The kuffar, like Joe Biden, he's not the wali al-amr for the Muslim. He's not a Muslim. He's not our leader. He's their leader. We live in the country, we obey the laws, but he's not a, he's not a leader for the Muslims. We obey the Muslim leaders, but we obey the Muslim leaders with what? With obedience to Allah and His Messenger. We don't obey the Muslim leaders in disobedience to Allah and His Messenger. So if the, if the Muslim leader told us, hey, get together and go, go, uh, go kill some Muslims, we're going to obey them? No, we say no. We know your obedience is only for what you call to according to the Quran and the Sunnah. It's for ma'roof. So this is a, very, very important to understand. The only person on the face of this earth that has ever come to us, his, his obedience is absolute, no questions asked, is Muhammad ibn Abdullah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Everybody else, it has to, their obedience is according to the Quran and the Sunnah. We obey them in the Quran and the Sunnah, and if they call to other than the Quran and the Sunnah, we don't obey them. All right. So after that, he said, Alright, so when Asahu dakhla nar, so whoever, okay, from when Asahu dakhla jannah, so whoever obeys, this, 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 uh, this could go back to, what is, what does it say in the translation? Yeah. Whoever disobeys him will be thrown into the fire. Yeah, the, the helm part, the same thing in our Arabic language. When Asahu dakhla jannah, when Asahu, Asahu. So the huwa here, the, the helm, it could go back to Allah or it could go back to his messenger. Huh? I don't know, in, in that book, what, what page are, what page are you on in it? Page three. No, but they're using the, he's using the, the original book that Kidar bought. Page three. All right, and then he said, what Dalil Qalahu Ta'ala, and this is one thing that I want you to focus about, focus on as we go through this book, is every single thing that he says in this book, he says after it, what? A Dalil. What Dalil Qalahu Ta'ala. He always brings the evidence for everything that he says throughout the book. So this is the type of, this is where we get our understanding of the religion from, from the Quran and the Sunnah. And this is the way that it should be. 
whenever somebody talks, they bring the evidence after they talk. You know, not just like sit there and just talk, 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 talk. So here he brings the evidence for everything. You'll see this throughout the whole entire book. So he said, "What well, delil a delil is is evidence because a delil is something that guides you to the correct way." So, like for example, they use the word delil even for a person who uh, shows you to an apartment or shows you to a house. He's like a middleman, like a real estate agent. They call him delil because he shows you to something that you're trying to find. So delil is evidence. All right, but in this case, we're using it as evidence. And in the Arabic language, they use the word delil, and you also see the word hujja, hujja. Wa alaykum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. All right, so he said, What the little call of Hutala inna arasana ilaykum rasulan shahidan alaykum. So he said, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, We have sent to you a messenger, rasulan shahidan alaykum. Shahidan, it means as a witness of over you. As a witness for what? That's in the general context, but as a witness that that you've been informed, oh. all right, because he's he's a muballa. You know, the Prophet وسلم, is for him to convey the message, and he's also a message over the people to show to you know, and, and with Allah Subhanahu wa Taala in the day of judgment, that what that the message has been conveyed. What did he say in the la in his last his last speech on Arafah, his last khutbah? It wasn't his last, you know, but the. The, the khutbah in Arafah, with the, I think it's, it's on the wall, right? What they call the last sermon. What did he say at the end of the message? I mean, he still talked after that. He didn't die right after that. Yeah, you know. Huh? What was the last part that he said? Uh, he, he said to the people, he said, Allahumma hal balaghtu. Have I told you? And the people said, Naam. He said, Allahumma hal balaghtu. He said, Naam. And all the people, they say, Yes, you've, you've given us the message. He said, Fal yuballagh shahid al ghaib. Fal yuballagh shahid al ghaib. Then the person who witnesses that you all witnessed that I have given you the message, he has to inform the person who didn't witness it. Fal yuballagh shahid al ghaib. Al ghaib is the person who's not present. So he said, the people who are present and the witness, you inform the people who weren't present that this message has been conveyed. And then he looked up and he said, Allahumma shahid. Allahumma shahid. He said, oh Allah, you're a witness. That they have said that I've conveyed the message. And that's it. So the message has been conveyed and the religion has been complete. So the, the Prophet sallallahu that was his job. Shahidin alaykum. And he came and he conveyed the message and he's a shahid that he conveyed the message. To the people. He said, Kama arasana ila Fir'aun Rasula. And he said, just like we sent to Fir'aun a messenger. And who was sent to Fir'aun? Musa alayhi salam. So he said, Fa asa Fir'aun al Rasul. And then and then uh, Fir'aun he disobeyed the messenger. He disobeyed the messenger. So we and we took him and you know we seized him. With a akhadan mobil, any akhadan kawiyan, shadidan, like a very, very severe seizure, I guess you could say, like in the English language, right? Like he was seized in a very, like he was taken in a very, very severe, uh, no mercy, no mercy type of way. Akhadanahu, akhadan wabila, shadidan, kawiyan, you know, like no, like a, no, no mercy. All right, but he tried to, he tried to say, la ilaha illallah. At the end of his life, didn't he? He believed, didn't he? In, in, in the last part of his days, what happened to him? No, 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 no. What happened? He got filled up with water and all the sand. Nah, the, it's Jibril alayhi salam. He was taking mud, mud, yeah. mud from the from the ground and stuffing it in his mouth because no. out of fear that maybe Allah would have mercy on him. So if that was the mercy that Allah would have with Fir'aun, then think what well, Allah has with you. So, you know, you should never, ever, 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 you know think that Allah is not going to forgive you your sins or, you know, not going to have mercy on you no matter what you do. You know, as long as you don't die on shirk, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgives everything. Allah He doesn't forgive and you shirk abihi. That uh, any a par partner should be associated with him. And he forgives everything, everything other than that to whomever he pleases. 
And but that's at, at your death. If you die on shirk, if you're alive, you can still make tawbah even from shirk, obviously, because the Sahaba, they came from amongst the mushrikeen, they became Muslim, and they made tawbah from that, and Allah accepted it and forgave them. So even if, if you're alive and you make tawbah from shirk, Allah forgives you. You know, but you, if you die as a mushrik, you're done. So he said, "Fa'asaa fir'aun al-Rasul, fa'akhadnahu akhadan wabila." All right. So that's the first one. The first one is that Allah subhanahu wa taala, He's created us. He's provided for us, and from the things that he's done for us is that he sent a messenger to all the people to convey that message to the people. He hasn't left the people here without knowledge. You know, you weren't left here without knowledge. You weren't left here everything to the, I mean, every single thing about Islam is such a precise, precise science that doesn't exist in anything on the face of this earth. Where the people, they look at, you know, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has, has protected the Qur'an. Yes, Allah has protected the Qur'an and everything that explains the Qur'an. So, I mean, we have Bukhari, the way the Bukhari was. We have Sahih Muslim, the way the Sahih Muslim was. We have all the chains of narrations. We know all the people, all the chains of narrations. We have books that will fill up that whole wall. Just on biographies of the people that narrate hadith. Just that alone. Books, enough books to fill up this whole wall. Some of these books are 30-something volumes. Just on biographies of the people that narrated hadiths, everything. We have everything. You have no excuse anymore. So for people now to sit here and like doubt Islam and doubt the truth of Islam, well, like even the poetry from Jahiliya, the poetry from before the from, from before the Prophet Sallallahu we still have it. Still have it. Children memorize it all throughout the Arab world in schools and everything. The poetry, the Arabic language, because that was a part of protecting the Arabic language. The Arabic language is the only language on the face of this earth now that is still in its pure form. What other language exists like that? Japanese has been changed, Chinese has been changed, Greek has been changed, Hebrew has been changed. Uh, the Arabic language is the only language on the face of this earth where we still study the Arabic language in the exact way. We study books when you, you, know, when you study now, you study grammar, Arabic grammar. What do you study? You study books from, that were written like two days ago? Are you studying books from people that wrote those books 700 years ago, 600 years ago? You know, so look at it. I mean, we, we study one of the most, the, the biggest books that everybody studies in the Arabic language is al fiyat ibn Malik, which was written by Muhammad ibn Malik, which was written in the days of Andalus. You know, when the Muslims controlled Andalus. How many hundreds of years was that? So, so mashallah, we, we, you know, I'm telling you, man, if like, uh, we got to, like, there's a lot that you guys are missing out here. And until you get that Arabic language, those doors are locked in your face, locked bolted not just bolted like bolted like you know all the way down with the chains and everything so you know until you get the arabic language you're not going to really 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 understand the the vast the vastness of this religion and how much i mean the, the, the science of hadith and all this and that's why you see that these kufar they can come and you know they can argue with like the the you know the the common muslims and try to trick them and then make them think that Islam is like, oh, you know, Islam is this, Islam is... Well, anybody that knows Islam and knows the sciences of Islam and how vast they are and how meticulous that they were put together and all the people that came and, you know, even to the point where we know all the chains and narrations. We have people today that have chains and narrations going back to the Prophet Sallallahu in Hadith today. So, I mean, it still exists. It doesn't exist like in the time of Hafiz ibn Hajr or Suyuti, but it still exists. So, I mean, it's, it's, uh, you can go to Mauritania today and they have shiuch. They took their chains and narration when Suyuti went to Mauritania and taught them Bukhari. They took all the chains and narrations from Bukhari out to Mauritania. And so you see, like, all the people in Mauritania, they have these chains and narrations going through Suyuti, going through half of the Hajar, half of the Hajar, all the way back to Bukhari. This deen is, is, is real. But, I mean, if you don't have the Arabic language, you can't get in those books. If those doors are locked. You're just staring at the door and you think, you know, What's behind that door? So he said, Athania. So this is the second thing, all right? He said, Anna Allah la yirada in shuraka ma'ahu ahadun fi ibadatihi. He said, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not pleased that any of partners should be associated with him in his worship. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone is the, has the right to be worshipped. Yeah. So you're taking something that only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala deserves, and you're taking it and you're giving it to somebody else. What was the example that was given in a hadith about shirk? About a servant. He said, imagine that you took a servant and you said, look, this is my house and this is my land. You, you work on my land 
you know, and you give me the money back. And he works on the land and he takes the money and he gives it to your neighbor. <laughs> you know, imagine that. You would be angry, right? You're like, no, I didn't bring you here to work for my neighbor. I brought you here and I said, this is my house. This is my land. You work, you give me the money and I'll pay you. But he gives it to your neighbor. You'd be, you'd be fighting, right? So imagine now that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has provided for you, giving you life, put you into existence and giving you all the blessings that you have. And then you go and say, oh, I like to thank my daddy for everything. You know, my daddy gave me life and my daddy, you know, uh, you see what I'm saying? Like, you know, you're giving the thanks and praise to somebody else, to somebody else. You know, Allah protected you, Allah saved you. You're, you're on a plane and the plane starts to experience turbulence. You know, you start to get scared. Everybody's like, you know, you're over there, you know, la ilaha illallah every three minutes, right? You know, trying to say the shahada because you're scared. But the plane lands safely. What do you say? You get off the plane and say, mashallah, that, that, that pilot was, a, he saved our lives. Pilot saved your life? So you're going to give the credit to who? So pilot, so you give the credit to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I am sakuhuna ila rahman. And what did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala say about the birds? You know, that they fly through the sky. Well, I am sakuhuna, I am sakuhuna ila rahman. Only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala keeps them in the air. You know, if Allah wanted, they all just fall out of the sky. All the birds. You give credit where credit is due. So this is what he's saying. He said, "Anna Allah la yirda an yushraka ma'ahu ahadun fi ibadati." So all the blessings and everything. So it's not just about making sujood and bowing down to somebody other than Allah, but it's also all the different forms of ibadah, all the different forms of worship. They all belong to Allah and Allah alone. And we're going to go through all these different forms. He's going to mention them a little bit, uh, probably in the next part, inshallah. So he said, uh, after that, he said, "Fi ibadati la malakum muqarrab wa la nabiyun mursal." He said, La Malik, Malik here is uh, no angel, and no, none of the angels, Muqarrab, that's, that's brought close to Allah. So you don't, even the, the angels that are closest to Allah, you don't go call on the angels and say, hey, you know, you got some closeness with Allah, you know, why don't you, you help us out, you know, put in a good word for us. You, we're going to do something like that. No. Why? Well, can they, can they do anything for you? No. No, because they are created, the, the angels are only created for one purpose and one purpose only. What is it? Watch Allah. To obey Allah, you know, obey Allah to carry out all of His commands. You know, the, the angels don't, they don't, they're not, they don't, they weren't created to like have that yes or no mentality. I'm going to do this if I want to. That's that's us, right? We have that like we have this so-called freedom of thinking, right? That we think that we have, that we that we think that we can like uh, you know choose what we want to do and choose what we don't. But the angels, they were created only for the obedience of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. So you think now you're going to go and like say to an angel like, hey, you know, hook me up, man. You know, you're close. Put in a good word for me. No, it doesn't work like that. And then he said, Wala nabiyun, wala nabiyun morsal. And even a, a messenger. So you think like, okay, the messenger, he, he was sent by Allah. He can't help you with Allah. If you don't obey Allah and his messenger, even the Prophet Sallallahu cannot help you. Cannot help you. You know, he doesn't, you know, his, his job was to what? Convey the message. And, he's, and Allah Subhanahu wa ta'ala called all the messengers what? He used the word nadir or bashirun. What nadir? Bashir? Wa Nadir. So Bashir it means what? Huh? Say Bashir? Bashir. Now from Bashara you Bashiru? To Bashir is a Bashir. Bashir it means somebody that gives glad tidings. Somebody that gives glad, uh, glad tidings. Who's he giving the glad tidings to? To the people who obey him. To people who follow him. You know, and who is he who the uh, the Nadir? What is the Nadir? The uh, Nadara. Nadara means what? To warn, to warn from. And who is he warning? Yeah, the, the people who don't want to obey him. The people don't want to follow the message. So you get the Bashara, if you follow the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, you get Jannah. Like he said, Kulukum, uh, All of you will enter Jannah except those that what? I refuse. Then he said, "What well, the little Taala, when the Masajid lillahi fala tadaru ma Allahi ahada." He said, "When well, the Masajid, the Masajid is here is not just the Masjid. The Masjid, because the meme here, the meme of Masjid is a meme of Makan. It means any place that you do sujud. The whole earth is for Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. When the Masajid lillahi, all the places that you can make sujud, but specifically the Masjid, the Masjid, because it's built for that purpose." But any place that you go and make sujood is masjid. It's a masjid. 
Because uh, any it's a place. The meme is a place. Like you say, mustashfa. Mustashfa in the Arabic language, it means hospital. It's a meme of the It's a place. It's a place that you go to for getting what? Well. It's tishfa. Like you're seeking a cure for your, you know. Uh, so masjid, the same place. You go to that place for the purpose of sujood. So he said, وَأَنَّ الْمَسَاجِدَ لِلَّهِ that All of them are for, for Allah. فَلَا تَدَعُوا مَا اللَّهِ أَحَلًا And the da'wah, the dua here is not just dua here, what? Calling on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala only. But the, the salat and everything that goes with it. So don't call on anybody except for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He said, فَلَا تَدَعُوا مَا اللَّهِ أَحَلًا So here he said, أَحَلًا In the Arabic language, it means like he left it, نَكِرًا نَكِرًا It means that it doesn't have a... Um, an article, like for example, like in the English language, you say the man and you say a man, right? So the man, it means it has a definite article and uh, a man, it means it's indefinite, any man, right? So here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, فَلَا تَدْعُوا مَا, فَلَا تَدْعُوا مَا اللَّهِ أَحَدَى So here he left it nekira, which means it's uh, uh, indefinite. Anybody, anything, any, you know, so it's, uh, it's, it's for all things. That means there's no, no exception. None. Zero. In the Arabic language, whenever you have, an, uh, you have um, right here, it's a nahi, which Allah SWT is telling you, don't do this. لا تدعو ما الله أحدا And then you have the nakira, when you combine those two things together, uh, in the Arabic language, you feel al-hasr, which means that it means anything. Like, no exceptions. Don't call on anybody except for Allah. That's it. Don't go to a grave. Don't call on a wali. Don't call on some religious, righteous person. Don't call on anybody. The only person, no, not the only one that you call on is what? Allah. You call on Allah alone. You don't call on any person or anybody or anything. Only Allah. That's it. So he, then he said, Atharita, the third thing. He said, Anna man ata'ar rasul, wawahad Allah. So now he's obeyed, the, he's obeyed the messenger and he's wawahad Allah. And he's a. Uh, and he's made Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he singled out Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for his worship. Wahada yuwahidu, it means to make something what? Wahid, which means one. Yeah. All right, so you have similar word, afrada yufridu ifradan. Wahada yuwahidu, and you, you, here, here's where you understand the word, right? So the, the verb is wahada yuwahidu, and the mustar is tawheed. And this is where you get the word tawheed. Tawheed, because it comes from the verb wahada yuwahidu tawheedan. So tawheed it means to make, to make him one, to single him out for worship. That none has the right to be worshipped except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone. So, so he said, أَنَّ مَنْ أَطَاعَ الرَّسُولُ وَوَحَدَ اللَّهِ لَا يُجُزْ لَهُ مَوَالَاتُ مَنْ حَادَ اللَّهُ وَرَسُولُهُ He said, it's not permissible for him to take as, uh, as close companions, to per anybody who's what? What does it say in English? Uh, close friends, friendship, alliance, alliance. Yeah, any type of alliance, any type of close friends. But what does it say after that? Man had the Allah wa Rasuluh. Yeah, that have gone against the guidance that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has sent down. And that's why I told you, I said this is going to come back in the third part, right? So the kufar, we don't take them as close companions. And it's not permissible to take them as close companions. Lakum dinakum ali hadith. You have a religion, we have a religion. We got nothing to do with you. As far as giving them advice and giving them da'wah and things like that, we do that. You know, and as far as obeying the laws and not, you know, we're not, you know, we obey the laws that, you know, that don't go against the Quran and the Sunnah. And we don't disrespect the people. We keep, you know, we always give a good image of Islam and good manners and good relations, but we don't have anything in our heart for them. They're not our buddies, they're not our friends, they're not our brothers, nothing. And, you know, it came in a hadith where the Prophet Sallallahu said, uh, you want the whole hadith or you just want this little small part? What do you want? The whole thing? If I can remember it, because I didn't write this now. So, so it's a hadith in Abi Hurairah anhu, in which the Prophet sallam, said, He said, لا تحاسدوا ولا تناجشوا ولا تباغضوا ولا تدابروا ولا يبيع بعضكم على بيع بعض So he said, لا تحاسدوا He said, don't become jealous amongst of each other. Don't be, he's talking about obviously the brotherhood between the Muslims. He said, La tahasadu, don't become jealous of one another. Al Hasid, you have two types of uh, jealousy, which you know like in English they have like jealousy and you have envy. But kind of they're kinda of like interchangeable. 
In the Arabic language, you have al-hasad and you have al-ghibta. Al-hasad, it means that you want that person to lose the, like Allah has given him a blessing and you want him to lose it. You want him to lose it. Like, you know, this is al-hasad and this is where the Prophet said, لا تحاسدوا don't be jealous of each other. If Allah has given another person a blessing, be happy for him. He's your brother, you know. Well, al it means that you see another person with a blessing and you want to have a similar blessing, but you don't want him to lose that blessing. And that's where the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said, La hasada ila He said, no, there's no jealousy except for in three individuals. And what are those three individuals, you know? Uh, he mentioned the person who uh, Allah has given, given the Qur'an and he stands up at night and prays, and prays and uses the Qur'an, he's memorized the Qur'an and to thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for the blessing, he stands up at night and prays at night utilizing what he's memorized from the Qur'an and he said the other person is what? You, you, you don't remember this hadith? The man of Huh? The wealthy person. The wealthy person that, uh, that he uses his money and his wealth to benefit Islam and the, and and you know the further the furtherance of the da'wah of Tawheed, huh? And what's the third one? And a knowledgeable person that uses his knowledge to judge between the people and uses it with hikmah, with wisdom, and to judge correctly with and just between the people. So he said, La hasad illa fi thalath. So here the Prophet used the word hasad, but what the meaning is is al ghibta al ghibta which means that you you want to be like this person. But you also want this person to what? Uh, you want him to keep his yeah. blessing, but you want I want the same as you. You understand? If you, you know, if Alhamdulillah, if Allah bless you with uh, knowledge, you know, I, want, I, want, I don't want you to lose your knowledge, but I want to be like you, you know, and have the same blessing. I want to share in the same blessing. So, but here the Prophet said, Let the hasadu, wala tanajishu. Tanajush is uh, the only example that I can give you nowadays is used in auctions. We don't really do it a lot in the marketplace nowadays, but they used to do it in the, back in the old days because you know there were never set prices. Uh, basically, the market is whatever the market is. So if I have meat, I can sell the meat for whatever I want to sell it for. If you want to buy it, you buy it. You don't want to buy it, go buy it from somebody else. That's how the markets were before. So what would happen is, is if a person had like a product, like you see in the auctions, they hire a person to go to the auction to keep bidding on the uh, on the thing, right? Just to get the price what? High, but he has no intentions of buying it. He's hired by the seller just to get the price high. So that the people will pay more than what they were gonna pay. So like he wants $10,000 for it, but this guy's job is to get it like 15, 20, $30,000. That's his job, that's what he's hired. And this is called a tenajush. So the Prophet Sallallahu said, well that tenajushu. You know, when you're selling between each other, don't do this. Be upright. Don't, don't do this type of uh, selling amongst you because it, it causes hatred between you. You know, because everything that the, the Prophet is calling to is what? It's brotherhood. It's unity, right? He said, وَلَا تَبَاغَضُوا And don't hate and despise one another. Don't hate each other. وَلَا تَدَابَرُوا What happens when you hate and despise each other? Tadabar. Tadabaru comes from the word adubr, which is the, the backside. The backside. You, you show him your backside. You don't, you don't, oh, salam alaikum, akhi. Oh, it's full of, man, please. You, you turn around, you give him the backside. I ain't talking to him. So this is a call to Dabaru. And he said, then don't cut each other off. Don't cut each other off. You know, don't, don't like, uh, you know, you don't, you stop talking to your brother. You know, like this type of thing. This is not, it's not permissible. If the person is doing something that's complete misguidance and he's called into misguidance, then no, we, we cut that person off. But as far as a person who's trying to follow the Quran and the Sunnah, he's trying to do the best, we don't allow these personal issues to come in between us. It's about the deen, it's not about something personal. We're always gonna have personal issues between us, but we have to look at the bigger picture all the time. As Muslims, we always have to look at the bigger picture. We have to be better than these folks. You know, we look outside and what do we see? Man, these kufar, everything's personal with them. They got, because they're not basing anything off of anything. We have the Quran and the Sunnah. We know what the truth is. So we, uh, we follow the truth. All the personal stuff, we can get over that. We can get past that. Because we're about Tawheed. We're all trying to do the same thing. So, of course, we're going to have personal issues. But we don't allow those personal issues where we cut each other off. We stop talking to each other. Nah, we're brothers. Regardless. You know, because you got to look at the bigger picture. The bigger picture is not about the personal things. 
the bigger picture is about what? Jannah. You know? So he said after that, then he said, Wala to dabaru, wala yabir ba'dukum ala bayir ba'd. And he said, and don't sell another person. And this is what he's talking about is like, for example, me and Yasser, we sit down and we come to an agreement. I'm going to sell Yasser 25, 50, whatever, 50 pound bags of, of rice for this set price. And then he leaves. We agree. We shake hands and we're like, okay, khalas. Because the Prophet Sallallahu said, Al-bayi'an bil khiyari ma'lam yatafarraqa. He said, the bayi'an, the person who's selling and the person who's buying, bil khiyar. He has a choice, ma'lam yatafarraqa, until they what? And until they part ways. Once they part ways on an agreement, it's binding. It's a contract. You're Muslims. You uphold what you, you... You can't come back the next day and say, oh, you know, I changed my mind. No, we agree. And I started preparing to sell you this rice, so you're going to buy it. Khalas. That's our, that's our agreement. Now, what he's talking about in this hadith is, now here comes another guy. He said, hey, you, yes, sir, come here. How much did he offer you? He said he's going to sell me this, this, and this for, let's say, $10,000. He said, I'll tell you what, I'll give it to you for eight. After he's already what? Like now he's undercutting me, you don't understand? And this is what the Prophet said, He said, and don't, you know, don't, un don't undercut each other in your, in your business. And once he's made an agreement with me, everybody, we respect that. Khalas. And also in a similar hadith, he mentioned the same thing where he, he said, لا يخطب في خطبة أخيه لا يخطب أحدكم في خطبة أخيه I forgot the exact wording. That if you know also, this has been selling, and also if a, if a brother has gone to propose to a woman, is it permissible for you to go to propose to her? No. No, until he's finished, until he says, I'm done, I don't want to have anything with her. So we respect it. We, this is all about respecting each other and keeping the, and maintaining the brotherhood. No woman is, is important to the point where we start having problems. And no business transaction is important to the point where we have problems amongst each other. Look at the kufar right now. All right. Anybody from the streets, it's very simple. What most of the killing on the streets right now is over what? Money and a female. And here the Prophet gave you advice to not fall into that. You know, money, don't, don't go and, you know, give a, you know, try to, you know, uh, get the girl that you, you know, that the brother's trying to get. Leave it. Because now you start to have a problem. Maybe, maybe he gets emotional. Maybe he gets angry. Shaitan gets up in his ear, grabs a gun, and now you got a Muslim killed another Muslim. Or in business, you see, undercutting people in business. It gets people killed all the time. <laughs> so, you see, like, Allah, Allah must die. The solution for everything. Everything. And this is just one hadith. Imagine now, you memorize Bukhari. Well, I mean, this hadith in Sahih Muslim is not in Bukhari, but okay, so you memorize. Sahih Muslim. So he said, Well, I be about the Kumala be about. He said, Well, Kunar Ibad Allahi Ikhwanan. He said, And be, O servants of Allah, what? Brothers. Be brothers. Al Muslim. Al Muslim, Akhul Muslim. He said that the Muslim is a brother of another Muslim. We're not a brother of nobody else. No Kafir is my brother. I don't care who he is. Even my own brother, he's only my brother by biological birth, but he's not my brother in, the, in that, you know, where I'm going to like. You know, in that metaphor, not in that type of sense of brotherhood. He said, a Muslim, a who? What? A Muslim. That only a Muslim is a brother to another Muslim. That's it. And we're the only religion and the only people on the face of this earth where that a huwa, that brotherhood transcends everything. Transcends social classes. Transcends what tribe you're from. Transcends what country you're from. Transcends what race you are. Everything. None of that matters to us. What matters to us is what? It's the deen. And you try to be about the deen or you just, you know, being against it or whatever. That's it. So, uh, Muslim, Akhul Muslim. La yadlimahu, wa la yahkirahu, wa la And then he said three things. He said, la yadlimahu, he doesn't oppress him. So a Muslim is a, is a brother of another Muslim. He doesn't oppress him. He doesn't do anything to oppress him. All right. Wa la yahkirahu, and he doesn't despise him. He doesn't hate him. وَلَا يَخْذُلُهُ And he doesn't do al-khudlan. Al-khudlan, it means that he doesn't, like when he's in his time of need, what do you do? Yeah, you go outside right now and you see like two kafirs pouncing on a Muslim brother. And you say, oh, Allah, you ain't no, may Allah protect them. I gotta go home. 
Nah, he at the very least you stop them from from beating them till you find out what's going on. At the very least, if you don't just go and start smashing faces, you understand. You're not gonna allow. You know, when he's in, the, and it's not just physical. When he's in his time of need, like for example, you have brothers that call to the Quran and the Sunnah, and what happens to these people? They get it. They get attacked online and through all these different groups, right? So you just sit back and quiet, like, oh no, you know, he can handle himself. Nah, you defend the brother. You you defend Ahl Sunnah. You defend the people of the Sunnah. This Khudlan Aqi, this is this well, it causes more problems because as long as we we don't come to each other's assistance and help when when that need arises, then all of these other groups they start to get stronger and stronger and they start promote the garbage more and more and more and more. So you see, like you know, when Ahl Sunnah gets attacked, everybody wants to get quiet. But then, you know, let one of these people like these Ikhwani dudes that get attacked online and everybody wants to, oh, but you know, no, he's good, he's nice. And everybody wants to come to his defense. But we, we, we always stand up and we defend our brothers, always. Whether it's a physical altercation, I gotta just allow somebody just to pounce on a brother, come on. That's crazy, right? You, you know, all the brothers in prison, you gonna allow that in prison? Some Kafir jump on a Muslim? That's gonna be game over, I think everybody's gonna have another charge. You know, <laughs> so, you know. So that's just the reality. So, so the khudlan, this is like he always, he doesn't leave coming to his assistance. He comes to the assistance of his brother. Then he said, Ataqwa ha huna. He said, Ataqwa ha huna. Ataqwa ha huna. He said it three times. And he pointed to his heart. He said, min sharr and yahkira Muslim. He said, it's enough of an evil for a person to hate his Muslim brother. He said, that's enough evil for him. Forget all the other sins that you do and all the things that you fall into on a daily basis. He said it's enough evil. He said, and Muslim. He says it's enough evil for you that you hate your Muslim brother. Forget everything else. That's enough evil. He said, Muslimi ala Muslimi haram. He said, every Muslim to another Muslim is haram. Which uh, what's the proper word in this for English? In English. Like his rights, like you know, every Muslim has these rights, and these rights will never be transgressed against. Like yeah, you can't violate the, the Muslim and these rights under no circumstance, unless bilha. He said, Muslimi ala Muslimi haram, dammuhu, wa maaluhu, wa eraduhu. So these three things: his blood, his money, his wealth, and his what? His uh, his his honor, his dignity. Oh, yeah. You don't go around spreading false rumors about him. Even if he fell into something bad, you don't go around publicizing his faults and, you know, things like, for no benefit. I mean, obviously, if the person is calling to misguidance, we point out the faults of people that call to misguidance. But you just got a brother, he falls into sins. You cover those sins up. You know, you protect his honor as a Muslim. Because if a person becomes dishonored and he becomes like, feels like people are attacking him, what generally happens? Huh? Well, or that, or he just like, he, he just disappears. Oh, yeah. And he's and then the kufar are like acting all nice to him, and next thing you know, he's just he's back in his old ways. So, yeah, would another exception be that say say for example, say you know a Muslim brother that's doing things that are uh, like say it's bad business practices, you know, and the Muslim brother is going to get in the bed with him, you know, he just messed over the last three, or is abusing women, or doing things that you know is going on to protect the people. We should still have yeah them. yeah you speak about that. You speak about if a man's known for like mistreating his women, beating women, mm -hmm. and now. He's gonna to try to marry his sister. Yeah, you want. Yeah, you let the you you, you let the the willy, the the person who's responsible for the sister. Hey, you know this brother is known for doing this type of stuff. If a person's known for bad business practices and not being honest in his business, and somebody and a Muslim brother here wants to go into business with him, say nah, he you know he's kind of iffy. You know about you know. Yes. Just be careful. Mm -hmm. You now, sit down and talk to him. Now before that, you try to have an NC privately or something. Right? Yeah, but if it, if if you haven't had the chance to get to him to advise him. You still have to advise the brother. That's a different issue. So you say just save the Uma from harm. So it's, you know, yeah, because that's a benefit. Like a greater good. Yeah, that's a, yeah. There's a benefit for that. But just to come here and say, oh man, you know this guy, that Muslim that sells the used cars, uh, he's a crook. He's doing this, he's doing that. But nobody here said that he, they want to buy a car from him. Now, if somebody said they want to buy a car from him, you let and the people know. Yeah, you bring it up. But just to like announce the faults of a person, no, yeah. we don't do that. Right. It says gossip. That's Kilo will call it. That's you know, he said, she said. We don't we don't you know leave that for the women, Aki. No disrespect to the women, but uh, you know, but that's not that's not our job, Aki. We're men, you know. You know uh, we go back and we, we check things, you know. We hear something about somebody, we go back and we check it. 
You know, man, you know, like imagine somebody comes up to you and says, well, you know about Fulan, you know, he's doing this. He said this and he said this. Well, did you go talk to him? No. Why? Why are you talking to me then? Go talk to him. You need to advise him. You don't need to be talking to me. I don't like, why are you telling me? So you see how, how this causes the problems. And this is called in Arabic is a namima. And namima, it means like what? That you go and you spread information from one person to another person to do what? Yeah, to cause problems though. But you're doing it to cause problems between the people, right. to instigate problems. That person will never enter into agenda. You understand? That's a serious that's a serious issue. So the last thing inshallah that we say, you know, I'm gonna probably have to leave this last part, because this last part is gonna be, require more explanation. So the the last part with the Dalil, inshallah we'll save that for next week. But just to, we'll leave that with a statement of Umar bin al Khattab because it kind of sums up everything that we were saying. So Umar, he said in a statement, he said, نَحْنُ قَوْمٌ عَزَّنَ اللَّهُ بِالْإِسْلَامِ He said that we're our people. And because he's talking obviously about him being from, from the Arabs. And then we know about the Arabs in the, before in the Jahiliya. What was their status on, on a world stage? Who were the big superpowers in the world at the time uh, when the Prophet ﷺ first started giving da'wah to Tawheed? What? Roman. Roman. And what, how do you know that? It's in the Quran. Alif Lam Mim, Ghulibat al Rum. It's in Alif Lam Mim, Ghulibat al Rum. That the Rome, Romans have been defeated. Ghulibat al Rum. Fi adan al Aradi wa hum min baadi ghalabihim siya ghalibun. And he said, Fi adan al Arad, in the lowest part of the earth, wa hum min baadi ghalabihim, and after they've been defeated, siya ghalibun. All right, that they were defeated. So there, there was a constant struggle between the Persians. And the Romans. So the Arabs, obviously, at that time, the Prophet Sallallahu when he was first given da'wah, started his, you know, with the Risala and, the, you know, teaching the people Islam. They, the Arabs were not something that was, like, highly respected on, a, on an international stage. So then Omar said, nah, no common. Like, they were Bedouins in the desert. A'azan Allah bil Islam. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us this might. With what? With Islam. But they're following of Islam. So they followed Islam. They took the message that the Prophet ﷺ taught them. And they acted upon them, uh, upon that message. And then they ended up taking, knocking the Romans out the picture, knocking the Persians out the picture. They defeated the two superpowers. It's Bedouins in the desert. You know, it's like, you understand. Like, could you, like, try to, try to, like, put that in your mind. Like, try to mentally understand that today. Like, even right now, if I were to tell you that Sardia is going to take on you know, Iran and Russia and America, you'd laugh. You'd say, yeah, come on, man, you're joking. But that's what they did. They knocked out the two biggest superpowers. So he said, Nahnu qawman a'azan Allah bil Islam. He says, so we're a qawm, we're a people that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us the strength and this might and this power with what? With our following of Islam. فَمَحْمَا بَتَغَيْنَا الْعِزَّةِ فِي غَيْرَ الْإِسْلَامِ He said, and whenever we try to find that izzah, that, that might, that power in something other than Islam, what happens? Avalan Allah. Now Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will make us debased. It will lower us and make us nothing. And that's what you see with the Muslims in the world nowadays. Everybody's trying to find that type of Ezza and they, you know, by doing what? By trying to appease and appeal to all the types of people. And I mean, our, our, our guidance is from Islam. We don't apologize for that at all. We don't apologize for anything. What's haram is haram, what's halal is halal. We don't apologize for that. We follow it. And that's what we call the people to. And that's how we get that Ezza. I mean, even though the Sahaba themselves, they were not seeking that. They were not seeking to be like, you know, controllers and government state heads. They, they, they ran from that. Allah gave it to them. He gave it to them because of their following of Islam and because of them being the people who deserve it. Now you see the people that are trying to go after that nowadays, calling the people, oh, we need to establish a khilaf. Or we need to, these are the people that don't deserve it. They don't need it. They, you need to get knowledge first. And when you're ready for it, Allah will give it to you. Allah will give it to you. Allah will raise the Muslims up, but you have to start. You have to, you know, you got to go back to just what he's talking about. The Izzah is from Islam. It's from the Quran and the Sunnah. It's not from our minds. It's not from sitting here trying to make these kufar happy and trying to appeal to uh, appease all the people and try to say everything to make everybody happy. You know, if you try to appease all the people, how much religion is going to be left? Huh? These are these homo dudes, they want you to like speak on their behalf. Actually, we don't speak on their behalf, right? If we do that, how much of the religion gets left out? All right, 
uh, these, uh, you know, the, the people that cause the mis, the, call the misguidance, and, and they they start to make, uh, you know, uh, you know, innovations in the religion. We start to appease them, start to like try to be brothers with them. You know, they're saying that Allah is everywhere, and Allah doesn't have a hand, and Allah doesn't have this, and they start to make up their own religion, you know, and they make up their own aqidah. If we if we try to appease them, how much religion's left? The Shia, if we try to sit there and try to appease the Shia, how much religion is going to be left? You know, or uh, the Buddhists and all these other groups, the Christians and the Jews. So the, the Izzah comes from following this religion. The nation. Uh, the nation of Islam. <laughs> hey, but okay, we still eat the bean pies. So. <laughs> <laughs> I don't care. Like, say what you want to say about them. Kufar or Kufar, yes. But there's some, there's some bean pie. Where is the bean pie? That's, that's, it's time to break bread, man. <laughs> <laughs> Uh -huh. Now with your coffee, I feel <laughs> your coffee is a detriment to society, man. <laughs> uh, if there's any questions from the from the back, inshallah, they can throw the questions now, inshallah. If not, we uh, wrap this up. Any questions, sisters? Leo, any questions? <laughs> what happened? Is it okay? She wanted to know, was it okay? Well, for the sisters, the sisters, sisters to gossip. Are you saying it's okay for the sisters to gossip? It's not okay for anybody to gossip. <laughs> you, said, you said we don't gossip with men. Well, I mean, no, but I'm saying what, what brings the problems into the household is women gossiping. When another woman tries to get into the business of what goes on in your house, in your house, and your wife listens to that woman, she's importing problems into your house. You know, and how do you know that that woman is not spreading that gossip just to cause problems, so so she can get the woman to, to want to you know you to divorce her, so she can get in now because you know that's that was her plan the whole time. So the women should not. You know, I mean, what what applies to us applies to them. But if from their nature, because of how they are, you know, their they're emotional, they need that emotional support from each other. It happens from them, but they, they need, they have, they have to go back and check. You know, if somebody says something, you check. Oh, what's that? My phone is saying that. My understand that. Huh? The phone saying that. I don't know, like, whatever, whatever Android has, it's like, it's about Bixby. You know what I mean? Like, you say, hey, hey. Phone, tell me. Oh, that was your phone talking. Yeah, no, they thought you, they, they thought thought you said, hey, 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 Bixby, you know, something like that. Oh, so, I yeah, thought that was from the back. You're not going to understand that, Bixby. Almost, uh, Bixby, no more questions. So, no gossip. Yeah, yeah. No more questions. So, no gossip. No important problems into our houses. Allah must die. Wa ilaha subhanakallahu wa bihamdika shalom la ilaha illa anta astaghfiruka wa atubu